Hello everyone, my name is Joseph and today I'll be talking about kernel level anti-cheat as the new standard in online games. So what is kernel level anti-cheat? It's simply an anti-cheat software that's running in the kernel level in your operating system and the kernel level is simply the most privileged um, level in your operating system so it has the most access and it is designed this way to prevent cheating in online games by having deep access to the system, allowing it to detect and prevent malicious activities that might otherwise go unnoticed by user level programs. Looking at the diagram here, you can see in the higher rings, you have your applications and device drivers, but your kernel, but your kernel level um, anti-cheat will actually be running in ring zero. This means it the anti-cheat software has access to all of your memory of your computer, while it is running and not just the memory of the actual game. Now, the usual approach for a game when it comes to enforcing no cheaters is to utilize band waves. Now, band waves work like this. There's your anti-cheater running and flagging accounts for suspicious activity. And these accounts are this data sent to the developers where they then comb over any false positives that may occur. And once they're happy with these results, they take all those flagged accounts, um, put them in the list, and they ban all those accounts. Now, the problem with this is that it often takes quite a few months, um, resulting in a buildup of cheaters. But the added benefit um, is they become very certain about what the actual problem is within their system. and it helps ensure that there are no false positives so people aren't wrongfully banned. Um, and funny enough, um, as cheaters are, are operating in this, in this time period, sometimes it can result in, in them actually making variations of the same cheat, but at some point they get confused because suddenly they get banned one random month and they're not too sure why they get banned. So that's also like an added layer of protection in a weird convoluted social way. Now here is actually the banning data for a popular game, Valorant, made by Riot. And Valorant was launched in late 2020 with kernel level anti-cheat implemented. You can see there from the graph, the far left, um, till around late 2023, um, there's just numbers of all the people, they've, all the accounts they've banned. And the blue dot and the blue graph in the back is all the accounts um, Riot Vanguard, the anti-cheat software detected and automatically banned. Sorry, it automatically banned. Um, the white graph is what the system detected as possible cheaters. So that's the data that they sent to the developers to come through for false positives. And that small red line is just all those accounts that were correctly flagged were banned with a couple of added um, self-reports along the way. Now, as you can see at this graph, this is actually a graph of all the games with kernel level anti-cheat at the moment. There's 325 of them. Um, paired with the graph we were looking at in the previous slide, which had hundreds of thousands of counts banned, you can see to some extent kernel level anti-cheat is actually working with easy anti-cheat leading the way. And at the bottom um, of the graph there, you see easy anti-cheat and Riot Vanguard. Um, these are actually in-house kernel level anti-cheats made by Blizzard, Riot, and EA themselves. This list contains big games like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Assassin's Creed. So a lot of these big online gamings that we that we play today have this um, very intense um, anti-cheat software. And the reason why is because cheats themselves have become very complex, very sophisticated, such as um, direct memory accessing. So something like maybe an external machine is able to rewrite the memory in your machine as you're playing the game to create cheats. So as a countermeasure, and Nova anti-cheat was formed for cases like this. But unfortunately, as sophisticated as they are, they are not immune. An example of this was in Apex Legends World Championships this, this year and around March. There it was the regional finals and two of the professionals 
were actually hacked during the event, interesting enough. So this wasn't a LAN event, and you can see this, this was actually a stream of one of the participators, and you can see wall hacks, some random pop-up. Um, he also had aim assist, so basically auto-aim, um, and some chat in the far left, as you can see, where someone had managed to gain access to the system and randomly turn on cheats during the match. This this was such a this was such a fight because this this live stream was in front of tens of thousands of people watching the event, and the security risk re led to them cancelling the regional finals and postponing it. As a result, people started creating rumors and being like, "This seems like a remote code execute." Um, sorry, a remote code execute exploit, um, and seems to be a vulnerability within Easy Anti Cheat, the top leading Easy Anti Cheat software. Um, so many people were very very worried to play Apex or use the anti-cheat software. Fortunately, they had a look at their logs, they had a look at their system, and they found out that it wasn't a problem with easy anti-cheat themselves, but rather Apex Legends. Now, this helped a lot because if there is such a vulnerability within your anti-cheat software, it allows any bad actor to gain access to your system and execute any piece of code that they want because it is a such... Um, such a high level access within your operating system that has all the admin rights you can think of. Um, a great example to display how invasive easy um, anti kernel level anti cheat can be is Riot Vanguard. Now, this is the anti cheat for League of Legends at Valorant, as some of you may know. And this anti cheat has to start with your PC as on, at startup. So let's say you don't like that and you're like, I don't need it, it's showing up my resources and you end the program in Task Manager, for example, what's going to happen is um, you'll get a notice like this on the right saying your anti-cheat hasn't been initialized and you have to restart your computer. This, this shows that just for a game, you're, the anti-cheat is now constantly monitoring your memory, looking for cheats, and some people don't like that. It feels very invasive. And it also has a history of flagging random programs like Notepad EXE as cheating programs. Luckily, they fixed that. Um, and while most anti-cheats don't operate exactly like this, this gives you an idea of why some people don't like how invasive kernel level anti-cheat is. In conclusion, due to its success, um, a couple of slides ago that I showed you, it has banned several thousands, several tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of accounts. Um, and experts say this is the future, this is the direction anti-cheat is heading, and it is not perfect, but it's what they're sticking to. Now, my recommendation is if you're still not happy with it is, sorry about that, if you're not happy with it is you can still do your research about whatever game you're playing, read into the anti-cheat, read into the end user licensing agreement, and monitor how the performance is on your PC. If you don't feel, if you feel like it's showing up too much of your resources, you can simply stop playing the game. It's still your choice. But the responsibility of your data not being mismanaged and your memory not being mismanaged lies within the developers. Unfortunately, um, they have lots of legal obligations, but there's not much in your control. A final option, if you're still not comfortable, would be to look into single player games or to look into console games as they tend to not have the same anti-cheat rules. And that's all for my tech talk. Um, thank you for listening.